Hello, everyone. I'm uh, honored to be invited to attend this uh, workshop in uh, Trinity College. Um, and uh, I'm very glad to be here. I think this invitation game is the best visa to pass the um, uh, to pass the custom when I entered into uh, Ireland. So uh, my topic today is that is a divergence of Garong origin meets Zhang Zhuang vs. Uh, Queendom. So um, I am a PhD candidate in ethnology from Paris Nantel University. So uh, first of all, I want to give a very brief information of my field, field work. Um, I'm, I did my field work in Danba County in Ganzi Prefecture of uh, um, Sichuan Province. It's located in the western part of the Garong region, has a population of around 70,000 people, which is roughly composed of around 55 Garong Tibetan, um, 45 percent Han and 4% Chang people. I conducted my field work mainly in a village called Kyongshong, where all the villagers are ethnically Garong. My field work lasted for um, almost a year, four months from 2015 to 2016, one month in 2016 and four months from uh, 2017 to 2018. So, uh, in Danba, there is a well-known history about Dongyu Guo, uh, which means the Eastern Kingdom. They claim that uh, their Garong women have extraordinary beauty, and their beauty lies in their ancestry in the beautiful and intelligent queens of the Dongnu kingdom. Uh, this claim, allied of Garong's region, is a dominant narrative in the current media-driven tourist propaganda promoted by the local Damba government. The high-profile name Dongnu is used on restaurants and hotel sign signatures or for the brand names in Damba. Nevertheless, during my various stay in the county, some people, especially members of the local elites, did not support the Dongnu story. But instead, they told me um, told me about another version of Garong's origin, named, namely the Zhang Zhuang. An ancient kingdom originated from western area of Tibetan plateau. Uh, in Chinese, we call it Xiangxiong. Even though concrete evidence for the existence of this mythical kingdom is vanishingly vanishing small, I found that its legend has nevertheless been integrated into the presentation of the origin of Garong women's beauty although in a masked form. In fact, the Eastern Women's Kingdom and the Kingdom of Zhang Zhuang are two ancient civilizations which purportedly existed at completely different period of history. Tales we tell to them are recorded in different sources. The former being found more in Chinese documents and the later in Tibetan bamboo texts. Why is it that these two different origin story converged into in the identity narrative and of the modern day Garong? And how do they influence the wider recognition of Garong ethnic identity? Furthermore, importantly, how do the local feel about it? Um, from the inception of modern uh, geopolitics geopol and the type of nationalism we see beginning from late 19th century onward, 
New nation states must also spend time on the elaboration of a nation history or histories of the ethnic groups within it, in which the origin myth plays an essential role. The historical ethno symbol of our origin story is often selected and elaborated on from existing sources or else invented, even invented with the aim of building a collective tradition establishing boundaries and maintaining the cohesion of a nation or ethnic group. Uh, how these origin tales are presented to the public in turn influences the recognition of the na national and ethnic identity for local population. During China, China's engagement in modern nation building activities before the advent of the Republican states in 1912, the Yellow Emperor, who lived in the period of high anti antiquity, was promoted as, a, um, as the ultimate as, as no symbol of the origin of Han culture. This novel, erotic um, and legendary ancestor, was a perfect, perfect symbol for the revolution allowing the new Republican regime to pursue political independence and cultural autonomy by harkening back to an ancient mythical era of heroes. On the Tibetan side, even though it was not technically a nation state when Chinese nationalism came into being, it nevertheless acquired a sense of belonging and common identity based on their Tibetan Buddhist religion under the leadership of the Dalai Lama. The story of the union between a monkey and a demoness metaphored versions of the Bodhisattva Avalodesvaha and the goddess Tara remained uh, prevalent in contemporary Ch Tibetan communi communities as an or origin meets. The two origin myths claimed by various factions of the Garon do not fit easily into other Tibetan nationalist narratives. Despite being officially classified as ethnically Tibetan by the Chinese state, instead the myth required a commitment and attachment to a separate Garon identity. The, in, um, the inter-ethnic relation held between the Garon and the Han, as well as with other Tibetans, therefore warrants a closer look. In summer, uh, this article will first discuss the two modes of elaboration of the Garon origin stories, uh, examine the origin of the Zhang Zhuang kingdom based on village narratives and on the maintenance of this history in religious writing. I will then analyze the emergence and uh, representation of the origin of Eastern Queendom for the purpose of tourism, based on Chinese official writings and on the living memory of the locals. Finally, I will try to understand what mechanism has led to the superposition of these two origins and its consequences uh, for those involved. All of the Garon cultural festival held in Damba County that I witnessed were centered around the theme of Eastern Queendom. However, when I interviewed the villagers in Kyongshan Kyung, village, this matriarch, pardon, matriarchal origin seemed quite alien to them, even though they referred to their territory as a valley of beauty. Most of the villagers were not aware of the Eastern Queendom. One villager attempted to explain this by trying to relate the local historical queen to the mythical queen recorded in the Chinese texts. We call our region Gya Mo Rong. Gya is a king, Mo is a wife. The two words together means the king's wife or the queen. Although it's only a guess, the Eastern Queendom could be driven from this region's name, we have been ruled on several occasions by a queen at a certain point in our history. 
There are record, records of queens in the Gyeong area. Throughout history, their reign were witnessed by Occidental travelers and the, um, and the veracity of which were later confirmed by locals. However, the succession of political power among the Gyeong was not passed along matrilineal lines. And in most cases, at the time of King's death, the women in the royal family, either his mother, his wife, or his sister, only took over the um, regency until his legitimate male heir was mu mature enough. There is no evidence in the historical documents nor in the memories of the village which shows a preference for male heirs. Male descendants were either valued more highly than their sisters or were at least put on an equal position with them. So although some village like Amto tried to establish a connection between the mythical queen and the local queen, others questions, question, questioned the authenticity of the origin of a matriarchal kingdom. One of my informants Hong Cuo uh, criticized this origin story by claiming that the Gyeong were actually immigrants uh, from Western Tibet. The Eastern Kingdom is nonsense. It's a story to please the tourist. We are the descendants from Western Tibet, a place currently called Ali. An elderly person from our village had been working in Ali since the 1960s. He told us that our language and his are mutual, mutually intelligible. Our language is very special and it is impossible for people from Amdo or people from Kham to understand. How is it that we can communicate with the people from Ali? It's not by chance. The language indicates that we have links from ancient time and it's proved that we are immigrated from Western Tibet. Ali Ngari. Uh, refers to the western region of the Tibetan autonomous region, neighbors with Spiti and Ladakh to the west. There we find the TC, the in Chinese, Gangren Bo Qi, the most uh, um, sacred mountain for Tibetan and Indians alike, which the later group called Kalash, Kailash. Today, pilgrims from three religions, Hinduism, Buddhism and Bun converge on this mountain and the nearby um, Maf Mapa, I hope I pronounce it correctly, Mapa Lake, known as Manasarova Lake to the Indians to the south. How do the Garong related to this vast area of the Western Tibetan Plateau? Jack Ray, a painter from Kyongsheng. Uh, give me an explanation which elaborated on that of Peng Cho. He said that the Gyarong are the descendants from an ancient kingdom called Zhang Zhong, Chinese Xiangxiong. We are the descendants of the immigrants from the kingdom of Zhang Zhong, which is located in Western Tibet. This kingdom, uh, this kingdom is older than that of Tibet, Tibetan Yalong kingdom. That is about 100 or even 2000 years before the time of Song Zhang Gangbo. The king of Rasti are sent by the court of Zhang Zhang. This origin was recounted in the history of the king of Rasti. The Zhang Zhang kingdom was a country that flourished in the de uh, deserts of the high Western Tibetan plateau between about 500 before Common Era and 625 Common Era, as it was really in Really mentioned in Tibetan Buddhist uh, histories, the origin and the evolution of this regime remain shrouded in mystery. In contrast, Zhang Zhang is mentioned and described many times in Bun texts. For a long time, the Bun religion did not garner anywhere near as much scholarly interest as Buddhism did in the field of Tibetan studies. However, from the 1970s onward, Studies about Bun began to em emerge and agree that Zhang Zhang constituted um, the cradle of Bun and that it was a kingdom.
based on the aliens of tribes uh, in the western region of the Tibetan plateau due to its in integration into the Tibetan empire in the 7th century is now widely considered to be one of the originator of Tibetan civilization. So um, some Gyarongwa, such as Pencho and Zhagre, uh, support the Zhang Zhuang origin myths. It's noteworthy that the only per people who told me about this Western Tibetan kingdom were those who have some knowledge of uh, literal, literary Tibetan, for it, <clears throat> some knowledge of Tibetan writing. Pencho's grandfather, as a secretary to the king of Brasti, was fluent in literary Tibetan, for instance. His son, taking advantage of his family's education, taught Tibetan writing to the younger villagers, including Jakri and Pencho. During my visits, Pencho was a chief of Kyongxiang village and in his spare time worked as a bumbo medium. Jack Ray is involved in temple construction and renovation projects throughout the Gaon region, as well as providing bu building services to villagers who need to decorate their homes. Unlike other villagers, this man could read Tibetan and have had more contact with the outside world. These local elites, together with the Bumbu monks, were generally the one who supported the Zhang Zhang uh, origin myths. However, there are today other Tibetan groups who believe in that their ancestors are the offsprings of a monkey and a goddess. Why did I not hear about this origin myth during my investigation in Danba? What identity narratives are being forged by these local scholars um, through the Zhang Zhuang origin story? Where does this Zhang Zhuang version originally come from? What is influence on the Gyarong? To answer this question, we must first examine the origin myth of the Gyarong kings, uh, Gyabo. These so-called 18 Gyarong kings who dominated the Gyarong region before the arrival of the communists still serve as a king re reference point in the identity conception of Gyarong people. Here, I begin uh, with a story of origin told by the last king of Brasti, Wang Shouchang. His Tibetan name is Nima Wangden, to a Chinese ethnologist. Um, he is quite old, so I, I didn't get a chance to meet him. So Ma Changshou, when the latter was con conducting ethno um, ethnographic service in the Garong region in the early 1940s. The royal family of Brasti passed on a meat which is said that they were descended from a mythical egg of the great bird Kyung. Long before our era, there was a big bird called Kyung descending from the sky. Kyung arrived one day at a place where which later named after him. That is why his tribe was called Kyung tribe. The bird gave birth to five eggs, one red, one green, one white, one black, and one multicolored. The latter eventually hatched and a man emerged. He had the head of a bear and the body of a man. From his descendants, a tribe was formed and migrated first to, to Natar, then to Brasti. Two brothers were born in this tribe. One became the king of Rasti, and the other king is uh, um, the king of Bawang. So this narrative shows us the mythical origin of the royal family of Rasti, which enabled the king to achieve his own um, to achieve his own apotheosis by forging a cosmic link with an egg of the divine bird Kyung. In Ma Changshou's original investigation, similar origin myths were found, was found for other Garong kings, such as Zhou uh, pardon me, I will say in Chinese because uh, the local languages are complicated. Wa Si, Ge Shi Zha, Suo Mo, Dang Ba, E Ke Shi, or we can also call it a uh, etc. 
According to the ethnography published from the 1940s onward, this divine bird kyung was wor worshipped as an ancestor deity by all Gyarong kings. Uh, for example, a statue of the Kyung measuring about one meter high was placed in the palace hall of the king of Wa, uh, Wasi and was used by the ruler as an object of veneration. This type of statue was also found along with other um, archaeological relics from the other kings of Suomo, uh, Songgang, Dangba, Chosijia, and Mingzhen Tusi. Furthermore, a wooden board engraved with Kyung's image was placed above the entrance door of the royal palaces. The creature was usually depicted with a bird head, a human body, an eagle's talon, two horns in the forehead, a raven beak, and two spread wings. This statue and board gradually disappeared after the political upheavals from the mean 20th century onward. Uh, it, is, it is a pity. The fraternal links, um, but the local people still remembered them. The fraternal uh, links among the various Garon kingdom were therefore the established through the veneration of the Kyung as a common ancestor deity. Based on the oral and uh, written his histories connected by Ma Changshou, I hear um, synthesized the um, genealogy represented by the um, graphs below. For example, this is the geology of King of Doling, the Wasi, Wasi Tusi. Although there are some differences among their origin stories, for example, Wasi Tusi, they believe they, they speak of the origin from the Buddha, uh, the Buddha of Puxian, Puxian Puxa, and uh, but. Then here comes the Kyung in the middle, and uh, actually the king of Doling is from the white egg uh, of the Kyung. And uh, but there, although there are some differences, for example, this is a, is a geology from uh, Dandong Dandong Tusi. So according to him, uh, they are from the Kyung's place, Kyung's tribes. And uh, so they became become four brothers. And then last one is the uh, geology of the king of Chosyap. And they are not there is there wasn't Kyung, but a rainbow and a fairy, but they are from eggs. The egg is um, adamant uh, in the cosmolo cosmology of Bumbu. And uh, here is a three king of the Garong. Area, and but their ancestry link allude to uh, fraternal ties for these um, ter terrestrial kings, which means they are brothers. They have the same origin, and for certain uh, Gyarong kingdom, um, such mythical shared family trees correspond to real life biological ancestries such as the two royal fam family uh, of Brasti and Ba Wang. Um, their ancestors, according to the meat, they were two brothers. Um, and uh, their uh, descendants remained ha having the kingship links. In the 1946, when the former king of Ba Wang was left, was left without an heir, his wife asked Wang Shoucheng, the last king of Rasti, to send his nephew to inherit the throne of Ba Wang. Accepting her request, Wang first sent his eldest nephew, Wang Zhaohan, Tibetan name uh, Ge Sang Ni Ma, uh, but the latter decided to abdict it two years later and go study in a monastery in Ge Shizhe instead. Uh, therefore, his younger brother Wang Ruohan took over the throne of Ba Wang in 1948. Therefore, 
for other kingdom, the fraternal bound is rather more um, symbolic. The story told by the king of Ge Shizai in 1941, his mythical ancestor had a fraternal type ties with a Chosgyap, a Gyaka, which means Zagu in Chinese, and Wenchuang. In fact, after waging war against the Qing Empire in, in the 18th century, the Gyaka kingdom was completely wiped out. Part of its territory was turned into a Chinese military garrison, and uh, the rest was divided into three kingdoms, so more uh, 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 Zhuzi and, and uh, Songgang, and uh, this therefore strange for the king of Geshiza to mention a kingdom that ceased to exist long before the year of the ethnographic survey in question. Uh, if indeed this king made no mistake in his use of the year of the, uh, in his use of the name of the Gyaka, and neither did the ethnologist Marshall, uh, Ma Changshou, then his origin story was not a hist historical fact, but rather something more um, akin to an imaginary collective memories, one which was shared among Garon kingdoms in which names and titles could be um, vague, vague and imprice, imprecise. The Garon kingdom never achieved political unification in reality, but the fraternal ties embedded in this origin myths reflect the formation of an historical Pan Gyarong uh, identity among its people, which may feasibly be the precursor to the Gyarong's modern day ethnic narrative. Uh, if indeed the common origin links with the uh, Kyong for the Gyarong royal family provides a basics for the recognition of the Gyarong ethnic identity, then we can refer to this as an example of um, primordial attachment. Uh, however, the type of connection which exists between the Kyung and the kingdom of Zhang Zhang remains to be answered. In fact, we found that the origin of Kyung date back to Bun mythology. It's thus the Zhang Zhang, the famous queen, uh, kingdom of the Bun religion, is associated with the Kyung. Uh, the Kyung myth was spread and transmitted through the Garo region by various means, such as the transmission of oral history, wall painting, uh, wooden statue, and also some written, nar uh, written narratives. They can also even be found in religious texts in Bunbo monasteries outside the Garong region. Kunjur um, Jaba, a prominent monk of Dege origin, uh, preached Bun in the Garong region during the, um, uh, during the night, uh, 1730s and oversaw the compilation and printing of Kongyur, sponsored by the Chosgyap king. Uh, Konga Nobu. In, indeed, the bio, biography uh, of the Kunjur Kunja Jaba uh, dedicated a portion of the text to the extraordinary king, which was one of his main um, patents. This text followed the Tibetan literary style, beginning with his family origin, of which the mythological uh, Kyung was given as the uh, incarnation of uh, the Chosgyap king's ancestor. According to this text, the royal families of uh, Chosgyap derived from a local chief named Aomo Longrin, who lived in Zhangzhong. One of his descendants, Gya Kyung, embodied embodying the great bird Kyung, conquered all the territory of Zhang Zhang and become his uh, uh, moniker. Uh, his descendants then mi migrated easternward and finally settled in the eastern Gyamo Rong region, it's a nowadays Gyarong region. This ancestry, which can be traced back to the Kyung, 
further underline the divine affiliation of the Chou Gap King, confirming his role as chief of religion political affair. The text also reveals the existence of the Nam So, uh, which means royal monk who work alongside the lay king in the Garong region. This proves that both earthly and spiritual power is rightfully held by the local royal family. Indeed, two royal brothers were to be assigned a specific trans uh, function. One could be a lay king and the other uh, a religious leader. So the actual relationship between the royal government and the clergy was interwinged in Garong region. Political power was exercises, uh, exercised by both uh, cleric and nobles. And the spiritual authority was not always held by celibates, monks only. It was common for the Garong royal family to send their young boys to monastery if one son, regardless of his order of birth, birth um, among the siblings inherited the throne, then the other son could uh, enter the religious life, become local petty chiefs, or be married into another royal family. These royal monks were then given the title Nam So in front of their names. The kingship ties between the lay king and the spiritual master were mutually influential. This du uh, duality of power re resembled a system that prevailed in famous Bumbo claim from the 11th century until 1959, allowing them to maintain their roles as leaders of the lay religious community as well as of their monastic centers. In a similar way, the Garong royal family maintain this alliance between political power and religious authority until the 1950s. The pairing of lay king, around, uh, lay king and religious master in Yang royal family was supported by the myth, mythological of the Kyung. From the Western Zhangjiang region, it attributed to a secret ancestry to this family where political power and spiritual authority were combined. Um, managing their more and less independent kingdom, these Garon queen were not only the gracious donors, but also the holders, along with their brothers, of the spiritual power over their territory. This religion, religious political system has a different form from the theocratic system in other Tibetan regions, especially the region ruled by the Dalai Lama, who were holders of both the religious and the political power, as well as being the earthly incarnation of the Bodhisattva Avalokitesvara from the 16th century onwards. This system had therefore given the Gyaron region different characteristics to other Tibetan regions, that is perhaps one of the reasons why some Garong people continue to claim a Zhangzhuang origin today. Kyung, the mythological bird, is a special symbol which represented the divinity and the leg legitimacy of the political power of local kings in the past. Today, it is still ex existed as a divine animal in the cos cosmology of the Garong people. Uh, in the Garong region, we can still uh, see the image of the Kyong uh, painted on the wooden board above, above the entrance door of the houses in the village of Kyongshan. He is considered as a tu tutelary god for the family. Moreover, the village where I conducted my field work is named Kyongshan, uh, meaning the place where the Kyong landed a name derived from the original meat of the Brasti royal family. This name once reserved, reserved it for the palace of the Brasti king was later chosen by the chosen as a villager's new name by the villagers of the communists to, took over political power. 
in summary, the meat of the Qun and their immigration from the Western Tibetan Plateau gave rise to some Gyaron's claim to Zhang Zhuang origin today, with some local people believing that the Zhang Zhuang is an even more ancient kingdom than the Yalong uh, dynasty of central Tibet, the latter of which is widely considered as a cradle of Tibetan civilization. This could explain why the ethnically Tibetan Gyarong do not share the same origin meets as the Tibetans in other regions. So um, here we come to a um, new uh, meet is a uh, um, Dongnyuguo, which Western Kingdom meets. Uh, actually, in the in terms of the narratives chosen for tourism development in Danba, no mention is made of any potential Zhang Zhuang origin for the Gyarong. Instead, the origin story of an Eastern Kingdom is overwhelmingly promoted. Today, as you enter the town of Danba via the road to the south, you will see a cluster of uh, gigantic statue. Here it is. I think uh, maybe you, you've seen it. Have you seen it in Danba? Um, I don't remember seeing it. OK, it, it's <laughs> newly built. It, um, it's in a, actually, if you from you, you enter Danba from the south, you, will, you won't miss it, because uh, uh, it's uh, the only entrance. And uh, this um, building com commenced on the project in 2019 and the statue is composed of two parts. The upper part, as we see, the most visible part is a phoenix uh, surrounded, uh, is a silver phoenix symbol, symbolizing the Dadu River and its uh, tributaries. This phoenix is surrounded by small statues symbolizing the watchtowers, so it's a, it's a little one behind. You can see the little silver ones behind. Uh, it's a Diaolo, uh, the e icon e iconic architecture of the Gyarong region. The lower part consists of an engraved tablet. It's here, the bronze ones. And uh, on which is curved the image of a young woman adorned with a traditional Gyarong clothing. Here it is maybe it's not very visible. And the, and the right of the tablet is an inscription titled The First City of Dadu River, the charm of Eastern women in both Tibetan and Chinese scripts. Uh, the statue as a whole reveals a close connection between Danba and the Eastern Kingdom. Records from this kingdom are to be found in a Chinese historical book, which have been co-opted by the local tourism industry and all those involved in its promotion. From the state to the local level, over the last few decades, I'm sorry. No problem. Okay. Um, local level over the last few decades, Based on its original meat, Danba is thus proclaimed to be the territory full of the living relics of the Eastern Kingdom. The Gyarong are therefore the descendants of this kingdom, with the local women, heirs of the intelligent and uh, extreme beautiful um, of ancient queens, making them one of the most remarkable features of this origin. This divergence in origin story between this kingdom and the aforementioned Zhang Zhuang kingdom is puzzling. When did this new uh, gynetic, sorry, it's, it's gigantic. Gynetic? It means uh, road by women. I hope. Gynarchic. Oh, gynarchic, thank you very much. Gynarchic origin. For the Garon appears, why and how did it come about, and under what circumstances, and how does it relate to the modern Garon ethnic identity narratives? And finally, what does this mean for the Garon themselves? The Eastern Kingdom was originally mentioned as an ancient. Uh, here are the questions. Sorry, I. And uh, 
originally as an ancient country in the old books of the Tang Dynasty, according to his historical source, it existed during the Tang period, Tang period uh, 618 to 907 era, although the date of birth, uh, the date of his appearance and disappearance are, are not clear. Um, Nowadays, the apparently historical origin of the country are attributed to the present Garong community, but their connection is not left open for interpretation. Today, the establishment of this connection is held in place by two powerful uh, forces. The first comes from Chinese his, uh, historians, intellectuals, and authorities which have undertaken the systematic classification and interpretation of all the different nationalities or ethnic group, groups, we call it in China, to exist in the modern Chinese nation since the beginning of the uh, 12th century, the 20th, sorry, the 20th century. The second force comes from the local people themselves who are required to align their own narratives with the local state version by the local tourism development authorities. In the construction of Chinese nationalism and the uh, quest for national identity, history clearly played an important role. When Chinese ethno ethnologists first conducted field work in the Garong region in the 1940s, the history of Garong was their primary research interest. The intellectual of the time made several assumptions about the history of the Garong ethnic group. In the ethnography of uh, Ma Changshou, as, as I mentioned above, he not only collected above mentioned region myths told by the local people, but he also proclaimed that he had located the Garong's uh, history with uh, history with Chinese official historical sources, which then form a classic narrative framework for later intellectuals to base their own work on. According to Ma, the Garong date back to center to a certain Rangmang people who apparently lived during the Han Dynasty, 2006 before Common, Common Era and uh, 220 Kama era, the existence of whom was recorded in several ancient Chinese books, such as historical memories, Shi Ji and the book of the later Han, Hou Han Shu, given the cultural traits that Ma observed among the Garong, which during his investigation corresponded to what these um, historical accounts of the Rangmang described. The comparison was set in stone at this time. He demonstrated the similarity of various cultural features between the people, which I uh, made a summary as follow. It, it is too long, so um, I won't speak all of them, but uh, one of his point is about that Ramon valued women as they are, and their maternal lineage and so, so do the Garong, so did the Garong and uh, um, Ramang have a special uh, multi-story architectural, which uh, Ma Changshou believed that it uh, correspond to the um, Diaolo uh, in Garong area. So furthermore, Ma Changshou associated the Garong with the Jialiang Yi people, so following the temporal framework of Chinese history, the Jialiangyi are believed to have a people who lived in the Sui dynasty, uh, 5,081 to 6, 581 and to 618 comma era, recorded in the book of the Sui, Sui Shu. They also live uh, in a multi-story structure in the mountains. Thus, the history of the Garong is constructed by Ma in the following, uh, chronology. So from Ramang of Han Dynasty, they become Jialiang Yi in the Sui Dynasty, then they become Garong um, today. The new appropriation of temporal reference, such as a concrete date, 
associated with the Han and Sui dynasty, marking a new beginning of an official, measurable history for the Garong people. More importantly, it provides means to uh, uh, align uh, Garong's present existence with timeline found in Chinese written documents. This linear framework of Ma Changshou has been repeated by several later ethnologists and historians. Uh, historians. These local Garong elites who received um, a Chinese-based education appro approve of this appropriation of Raomang, Jia Liangyi, and other groups from ancient times into their own local history, guided by a substantial view of history, common cultural features, especially the multi-story architecture and the relatively high stature women hold in Garong society are considered evidence of real historical facts. Therefore, the collection between the Garong and those ancient groups recorded in the Chinese sources prove these histories to be true. Among these ancient groups, the Eastern Kingdom has been identified as one of the precursor of the Garong because it has some of the same cultural features as the Rangmang, the high rise houses and the dynastic social system. How, more, moreover, the relationship between, established between those ancient communities further integrated Garong's history into the identity narrative of Chinese official history. Statements made by Chinese intellectuals about Garong history as a legitimacy of expert institutional knowledge, the kudu of which has an inevitable influence on the conception of Garong ethnic identity. The discursive power exercised by the Chinese scholar is recognized not only by local authorities, also by some local intellectuals. In 2012, during the Garong Cultural Festival, a forum of Garong culture was held in Danba town. Several scholars from a university or research center were invited to speak by local governments. Several, um, a local villager who was also a former local government official participated in the forum and he explained to me that uh, it, is very, it was very necessary to listen to the expert's opinion. Thus, local official and certain local intellectual actively attempt, attempt to place their own historical comprehension with the Chinese national context. Through this active, active participation in Chinese official history, this local elite constructed and uh, inter interpreted their history and understanding by embedding them with a grander national narrative. So in general, um, the local, certain local intellectuals support the Eastern Kingdom narrative, and they believe that the women's kingdom story is well known uh, by the Chinese tourists because of the famous novel, Journey to the West, Xiuzi. And so this exotic ancient kingdom is associated with the economic and political interest of the Danba County. So in conclusion, the kingdom of Zhang Zhuang's history, uh, which, oh, I, sorry, I missed one thing is that actually the Kyung is behind the kingdom story. Uh, although we call the Phoenix, the great statue in the entrance road, uh, Phoenix in Chinese, but uh, in their uh, Tibetan inscription, they called it is, uh, uh, Kyung, Kyung Chen. It's a great Kyung. Uh, so uh, I think that uh, the name Phoenix is given um, in Chinese for the benefits of the Han tourists, but the Kyung, uh, the Garong still keep the Kyung close to their hearts. So in conclusion, I think uh, these two, this divergence of their origin corresponds to um, a construction of their ethnic group 
um, corresponding to Anderson's concrete um, concept of an imagined communities. So without erasing the memory of Zhang Zhuang, they have chosen to place it in the Queendom's shadow instead. So thank you all for listening. Sorry for the delay. Thank you very much.